I'm Maggie. Welcome to Experiments in Crafting. Uh, tonight I've got a couple of things to show you guys. Um, I've sort of picked up a little bit of a new hobby. Um, I've tried some needle felting, and so I wanted to show some of the stuff that I picked up for that. And if it's something that you've been thinking about trying out, I've got a few little tips so far um, on products that I like and products that I don't like and things like that. So um, I can share that a little bit. Um, and then I also picked up a copy of, uh, a book called Mini, Mini Kingdom, which is 36, uh, Amigurumi, like, little doll patterns. They're, they're kind of little, um, quick patterns. So I thought I would show that off a little bit and show you a few of the patterns, well, show you a few of the pictures, um, not the actual patterns themselves, uh, and just let you guys take a look at that because it's pretty cool. And I um, I thought it was a pretty good deal. The designer has a lot of patterns available on her uh, Ravelry. And they were a few bucks a piece. But this, I want to say new from Amazon was like 12 or 13 maybe $14 um, for 36 patterns. So it ended up being a really good deal. So, um, I will start with saying welcome and thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, I have been streaming kind of sporadically. I really try to stream on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock, but uh, it has been a really, really busy several months uh, where I work, and it's probably going to remain busy for a little bit longer, um, and so... I some days when I come home on Thursdays, and I know I've said this in the past, like, some days I come home and I just don't have it into me to, like, talk and be sociable. I just uh, need to need to rest my, like, brain for a while. So um, I appreciate you guys joining me as sporadically as I am streaming, um, and hopefully I can get to a little bit more consistent streaming schedule uh, as things calm down a little bit. Um, all right, where do I want to start? Uh, I guess I'll start with the little Amigurumi book. So this is uh, Mini Kingdom. Um, it is all these like little, they kind of remind me of little people. Uh, they kind of have round uh, bottom they don't they don't have like distinct legs. They're kind of uh cylinders at the bottom with detail. Um and then they've got kind of detailed faces and outfits and stuff. And I'll flip the book open. You can see here are all of the different uh patterns included, like all of the little people. They're they're pretty tiny pictures, but there's four different princesses, a knight a prince, a couple of uh, animals, so a cat, a dog, a cow, an owl, a bee, um, a couple of different plants, a wizard, a dragon, a lamb, a unicorn, uh, a drummer boy, a joker. Um, and so I thought I'd flip to a few pages, and I've got a couple picked out here, um, and I've got a piece of cardstock in here to uh, block the patterns, but the p patterns look well written and laid out pretty nicely. And so you can kind of see um, they're just small, I don't know, little characters, and I thought they were cute. Uh, like I said, I thought it was cool that you got so many um, patterns all in one book. Let me see if I can find another good example picture here. Um... Let's see. There's a couple of spots where there's good, uh, like, big photos. This one's kind of cute. So this is the wizard and I think the thief and what I assume is a witch and an owl. Um, so those are kind of cute little patterns. My goal here was to be able to, if I didn't want to, like, make a specific pattern, um, there's enough like variety in the patterns that I can 
borrow elements from each pattern. So if I want to make, um, for example, maybe the witch with the wizard's hat or um, maybe one of the princesses, but I want to give her a hood and like turn her into Red Riding Hood or something like that, um, you can kind of borrow and steal where you uh, need to from from different patterns. Um, and so that's part of the reason that I went with the Book of 36. Um, so again, that's Mini Kingdom. Um, I thought it was a good value. It's by, uh, I am not sure how to pronounce this, Aradia Toys. It's A-R-A-D-I-Y-A Toys. Um, Aradia, maybe? Um, and I, the, the artist's first name is Olka, and then I'm not. Uh, no, Novietska, N O V Y T S K A. Um, kind of butchered that, but if uh, you search Mini Kingdom, I am sure you'll uh, find the artist, and then you can find her Ravelry if you don't want to buy the whole book. Um, so that's that's that. I thought it was cool. I thought you guys might be interested to see it. I know a number of you really liked the little mini crochet creatures. This book here um, that I'd shown in the past. And so these were these kind of little bitty uh, crochet animals. And so these are sort of little bitty crochet people. Um, so I thought uh, I thought you guys might be interested in that because I know a lot of people really uh, were interested in this mini crochet creatures book. And so this one is... Um, about 50-50 people and other. So animals slash plants. So anyway, I thought that was fun. Um, moving on. Uh, I, let's see. So, oh, you know what? Uh, a couple people have said hello. Uh, Jane and Val both joining us. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, Jane said mix and match. Definitely. That's kind of my intent there is to be able to pull different elements and make whatever I want. Um, and then Val says she has a feeling once I get started that I'll be making most of them. That's probably true. Um, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I really like complete collections. Um, I, I like the Wizard of Oz and I got a couple of these like little... Madame Alexander, they were uh, McDonald's toys, but they're cute little dolls. And they released them like two rounds in like the mid 2000s. And I got a handful of them at like a garage sale. And then I got a couple more. And not too long ago, I went online and found somebody selling basically all the ones I was missing. And I don't need them. I don't really have any use for them but like i so wanted the like complete collection so um i have a feeling you're right if i if i start making those i'll want like the complete kingdom um or at least a a full set of some logical set like a prince a princess a dragon maybe something like that or the wizard and the witch and the owl or however however so um anyway uh, Tracy says hello and loves my cowl. Um, I really like this cowl. This is the, uh, Dottie cowl that I think I reviewed a couple of times on various live streams, but, uh, it's a free pattern. Um, it's a little bit difficult to get started, but once you get the first four rows done, it, it's pretty much smooth sailing from there. Um, but you have to work uh the first two rows get worked into the same set of stitches and then the third row gets worked into you got to tip the stitches over and only work like into part of them and then on the fourth row you work and like sort of seal up the row and it, it's pretty complicated to get started um and i really enjoyed it and then i ended up modifying the pattern for a pair of fingerless gloves, and actually, it's one and a half fingerless gloves currently. Um, I've I haven't finished the second fingerless glove. I should just knock that out this weekend. Um, it's I've been carrying that bag around for weeks, actually, probably more like months. So, 
Um, anyway, so we watch uh, sort of some a, a lot of YouTube. Uh, besides like being on uh, like doing YouTube videos, we we watch a lot of YouTube instead of like broadcast TV. And there's a character that uh, we like, and so I made this little Amigurumi um, version, uh, sort of a cube version, um, and that was pretty fun. And I, I don't know, I enjoyed doing it, and I actually ended up stuffing this with uh, some of the wool roving that I had on hand. Um, this little guy's name's BB. Um, and so I stuffed him with the wool roving, and that was kind of fun, and he's he's kind of like a little bit more firm than you than I'd expect. Um, but also the wool roving doesn't show through the stitches because I used a dark wool roving. Um, it's, it was black with a lot of like bits and pieces in it, but you don't really even see the, the little bits in there. So, um, I had fun with that. And then I thought that, um, it might be fun to do a needle felt version of this. Um, so the little amigurumi was fun. Um, and then I, there was a, a show that came out and a lot of the characters were available in like little car versions of themselves. And so I made the little car version of this character um, in needle felt. And so I had, I don't know, it was just kind of fun and something kind of I don't, quirky to do. Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're supposed to be guinea pig cars. Um, it's a Japanese show that's uh, gotten some popularity right now on the internet. And so they're, they're supposed to be, they're mole cars, um, but they're little guinea pigs. And so I made the little version of this guy. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know if you can see his little tires. And I kind of followed the color scheme and still has a little tail. But anyway, I thought I'd show those with uh, to you. And then um, I did a lot of... Uh, while buying the stuff for the little needle felt, I bought a variety of needle felting supplies, and I thought I'd share some of those with you. I know mostly we talk about crochet and yarn, um, but it's not a big jump from one fiber art to another. Uh, I imagine that all of us have at least attempted a second fiber art. Um, whether that's weaving or knitting or needle punch or embroidery or spinning. Um, so I started a little bit of a journey into needle felting. And so I thought I'd share some of that with you. Uh, so I had a little kit and I don't know if I've got all the pieces on hand here that I bought probably from like Walmart. I don't I don't think I've got the whole kit here. But it came with a couple of little rubberized needles and it came with one of these little foam backstops. Um and then a a little teeny tiny piece of felt um and so I I've got those pieces here and they're okay. Uh I think I paid like $2 for the whole set and like I said it was like a needle felt like beginners um, I think you made a leaf, um, and that was from like Walmart. So that's one little piece. Um, and then I picked up some wool from Hobby Lobby and it is not great. Um, so let me pick out the wools that are from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to sort out the wools and I can do them by hand feel. Um, and I'll show you why that is. Um, not that guy. Okay, so I think I've got them all sorted here. Um, all of these colors I got from Hobby Lobby, and they were pretty cheap. Um, some of these came as, like, layered swirls. So this was in the center, and I think this one was wrapped around the outside of it. And then I think there was one other color... Uh, maybe this purple wrapped around the outside of that. And it came as sort of like a swirly cake. Um, and they were a couple of dollars, three, four, something like that. Um, these bigger chunks were like a dollar 
89 or something. And I don't know if you can see all of the random garbage in here. Um, there's lots of little speckles and stuff. This one feels a bit nicer than the black wool, but there's just lots of garbage in this wool. Um, the black wool is just really lumpy. Let me see if I can, we might have to zoom in on this, but I can't even get like good chunks of it. But I don't, I don't know if this comes through super well, but it's just, it's fine. Um, it did the job. It felt it okay, but it just was like, uh, I knew it could be better. I've handled some wool roving before and it, it wasn't well combed and it kind of was separating and there's lots of little bits and pieces and it, you can just see like as I'm unwinding it, there's like thick and thin spots and there's a little bit of a mess. Um, so the Hobby Lobby stuff is okay, but not amazing. Um, and actually, the turns out the wool roving like for amazing stuff is not that big of a jump. Uh, as far as like you can get really nice stuff in a like a variety pack for pretty cheap. Um, because it's it's not spun into yarn or anything like that. You can just get like little bits and pieces from places. Um, grab bags and all sorts of things if you're not picky on colors. The stuff that came in the swirls feels a bit nicer. It's also a lot thinner, um, which I think helped make it a bit more consistent. Um, it's not quite so thick and thin, but you can still see there's a lot of like little over dyed like bits of garbage in here that would just get thrown away. You can see there's a big blip of something. Um, and so I guess it, my recommendation on Hobby Lobby for needle felting is it's nice that you can get something really quick, really local. Um, their needles, like the actual needle felting pen, was terrible. Um, I couldn't get it to like, I, I, I don't even know what the deal was. It wouldn't like stab into anything. It had really bad reviews. I knew that going into it. I sometimes have a tendency to think, well, maybe it's not as bad. Like, pe sometimes when people review things, they're they're either super happy with it or super like angry about it, and you don't get a lot of like moderate reviews. And that was kind of the case with this pen. Was they were either really good reviews or really terrible reviews. And so I tried it out, and I'm in the really terrible category. Um, I wasn't thrilled with it when I started out, and then I got the Clover variety pen. Like, I got the one from Clover, and I'm positive it's no good. L or, like, positive the Hobby Lobby one is no good. Um, by comparison to the Clover one, like, it's it's not good. Um, so... Normally, I'm a big fan of Hobby Lobby, like Yarnology, their house brand stuff. This was a dud uh, as far as, as crafting supplies go. Um, but the variety of color available to just like stop at the store and pick it up is pretty good. So the quality of the wool is okay. Um, though for needle felting, it doesn't seem to have to be all that amazing um the only thing i didn't really care for were the big packs the dollar 79 packs those don't seem very good i like the little swirls and the variety packs much better um they just feel like a lot nicer wool than than these um honestly if this wasn't labeled 100 percent wool i probably would have guessed that it was acrylic um so i'm gonna put these back in the box what else is in the box? Okay, so the only thing in the box so far is the uh, supplies from the Walmart set. And now I'm scraping all of the Hobby Lobby wools in. All right, so Hobby Lobby wools are in the box. Um, I decided to do this on a day when I couldn't go to my local yarn store. And so... 
I tried it out. I had a lot of fun with like kind of getting started. And then the next day I was able to leave at lunch and run down to my local yarn store um, and pick up a few things. Um, and so I got a just a really nice like undyed natural wool for making like the bulk of the structure. So after I did a little bit more research into needle felting, I, I learned that a lot of people do sort of your core shapes in a like stuffing color and then cover with the like actual accent colors. So in the case of this little car, I did the whole like bean shape inside is all this like core wool color. And then there's just sheets of black laid on top and felted onto the uh, core wool. And you don't see it like poking through anywhere. I did, I, I tried to do a pretty decent job of covering it. Um, I know that my, the surface of my little car is a little bit fuzzy. I probably need to go back in with the finishing needle and just keep going. Um, it wears your arms out pretty quick. Uh, you, you just basically stab it repeatedly. And so um, by the time I finished that little car, I, I was pretty done um, with that for a little while. So um, I need to go back in and like touch it up. But so I got some core wool. Uh, this was, I think $2 an ounce. I think I got two ounces. So four bucks. Um, this ball was about twice as big I used. It does pack down pretty far. So you do need more than you think you do. But if you use the cheap stuff for the bulk of it, then you can use the slightly more expensive colored stuff for uh, accent pieces. So that brings me... Oh, that's a Hobby Lobby one. Uh, that brings me to this pile of yarn. This pile of yarn uh, came in a set from... What is the name of this? Fiber Trends. Um, I got a set of colors and their, like, starter kit. So it came with this black, two separate things, a, a pack of eight colors. Yeah, eight colors. And then separately, I bought the foam block and these four needles. And that's it. Foam block and four needles and then separately the eight colors. And these were a bit more expensive than the stuff from Hobby Lobby, but they seem super nice. Um, the needles are crazy sharp uh, and, like, pretty aggressively barbed. There's no way that that's going to show up on camera because the needles get so teeny tiny. Um, but they have these, like, little... I mean, barbs is the right word for it. They're sort of like little thorns on the needle. And so as you're stabbing it into the project, it sort of like hits the fibers in a whole bunch of spots. So if I turn that, you might be able to see that it's not quite shiny. I'm going to stop turning it so we can focus. Um, okay. So... If you, as I turn that, you might be able to see that it's got, like, these little, like, pointy bits. Um, if you hold that right there, I'll get the heavier-duty needle. I think red is heavy-duty? Red is heavy-duty. There's the heavy-duty needle. That might be a little bit easier to see. Maybe not. Um, but this came with two... Medium needles, a heavy needle, and a fine needle. Um, they seem like very nice things. And then the foam block. And again, the foam, um, both this kind of foam and this kind of foam, are just backstops so that you have something to stab against. Um, you need... It, it literally are just repeatedly stabbing. I'll, I'll pull the car over and just kind of show you. But it's literally just stabbing over and over again, kind of packing the wool against each other um, and forcing the scales on the wool to interact. So um, for those of you who've never looked at like microscope images of wool, you should look those up because it's really cool. Um, the outside of like the individual wool fibers 
have what look like little dragon scales all over them. And those are part of what makes it feel like raspy in your hand. Non-super wash wool. Um, but just if you look up wool uh, or wool versus super wash wool, you'll see the difference. Um, but but yeah, there's there's literally like these dragon scales and they like will interlock with each other. And that's part of what causes the felting. Um, it's also why super wash wool is in a lot of cases machine washable um, because it won't felt like that. Um, the other thing about wool is it feels scratchier or coarser depending on how thick the fibers are. So um, depending on the variety of wool, it can feel a lot scratchier, a lot nicer. Um, but these are really nice feeling wool. Um, they're probably not merino. I don't think I have the package, but they're a, they're a nicer variety of wool than whatever um, this is. But they both do the job for felting and really... Um, it's not necessary to have nice wool to stab into a project, uh, but it is nicer to work with. Um, it, it just was a little bit more cooperative. Uh, and then really what I was after were these two colors, which were important for the character I was making. Yeah. Sure. Um, my husband said there's a diagram of wool felting, um, that he found and I think is going to try and show. Um, but anyway, so I've got the, this color variety pack and we might get a little diagram popping up here. Um, okay. He's going to get it loaded. So I got the eight color pack. Um, there's only a teeny bit of the black left because it, it, like I said, it had a much nicer surface. It was a lot nicer to work with. So I made like the ears and the tail and stuff like that. Um, and I didn't really know what I was doing. I watched a few videos and then just kind of jumped in. Um, so these I'm going to put in the box. And then I'm going to move this foam. Um, one of the things that I keep seeing that's a problem with this foam, and I've already started to experience it, is that you might be able to see here. There's There's a spot in here where it's no longer shiny. It's just kind of a dull black. Um... I don't know if it's apparent. Sometimes it doesn't show up well on my monitor, but it's clearer on uh on the like on your phone or on your tablet. Um but there's there's a spot in here where it's no longer shiny and what happens is when it starts to like break down and not get shiny, um it also starts the little barbs on the needles will start like ripping teeny tiny pieces of the foam off of here. It wasn't a massive problem because the most, like the majority of my project was black. Um, and then once I got down to the teeny tiny detail work, um, it wasn't super important because they were getting felted to the surface, not to the mat. But the sort of issue here is that the little black bits do come off into your project. So this foam is nicer to work with, but degrades. Uh, this foam is, doesn't degrade in the same way, but it gets flat. So like right here, it's rigid and you can see it's like resisting my finger. And here where I did my felting, it just has collapsed. Like I basically, um, this is basically like bubble wrap and I collapsed all the bubbles inside. So it, it's not bubble wrap. It's, it's like a foam, but I, I've basically broken all the cells here. Um, and so this is not going to last real long and was, it got pretty annoying because I was working in this spot and I kept moving it, but you can see there's a bunch of spots that I've basically killed, um, working around here, but it, it, it got annoying quick because you're, you're trying to like make a shape and then it, it sort of like collapses and you end up with like, instead of getting a flat thing, you end up with like a curved thing. Um, so that might be partly my fault and not knowing like my technique very well and not moving it often enough. Um, and it might be partly just that this foam is not great for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that on stream? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we found a, a diagram of just felting and how it's working. 
mostly in relation to blocking, but uh, also just trying to explain sort of the concept of like the, those um, scales sort of locking together. So you can cause felting while you block uh, wool items that are non-super wash. So, for example, if you made a hat out of a wool, um, you would, uh, if you're too aggressive with it, you can cause the, the fibers to lock together. So. Okay. Um, so that's two types of mat that I've got. I've got the foam, the black foam, and then the sort of, I don't know, the white plasticky er foam. Um, I also got the, so those came with kits. This one I bought from Clover. Actually, I bought from Amazon. From, they bought it from Clover. Um, this one worked really well when I had fabric. Um, I felt it against some fabric for something. Oh, I was making eyes for a doll. Um, they turned out scarier than they were cute, but, uh... When I was felting against fabric, this worked really well. It's basically impossible to use if you're if you just have the the felt itself. It it's basically like a bed of needles, um, and there there's not really any like structure. I mean, it's it's essentially a brush, um, and so yeah, it works amazingly well with fabric and not at all on its own, as far as I could get it to work. Um, so I do have one more mat in the mail tomorrow. It should be here. Um, and it is a wool, like, a wool felting mat. And I don't know if that's going to be better. I'm a little bit worried about felting my project to the mat. Um, but it had the best reviews. It's from a company called Wool Buddy. Um, and I found a deal for it from, uh, Blick Art Supplies of all places. Um, and so I ordered it from them and it'll be here tomorrow. Um, they offered me free shipping and it was like two weeks for free shipping and it was $3 for two day shipping. So I paid the $3 and got it two day shipped. Um, but I thought that was pretty weird to like offer free shipping. And then it was, it, it was over two weeks for free shipping. Um, and if it had been $10 for shipping, I probably would have taken the free shipping and um, just not worried about it. But it it was $3 to get it two-day shipped. So I went with that. Um, also from Clover, I picked up the uh, three-needle pen, the five-needle, I don't know what this thing is, punch, I don't know, stabby thing. And the comb slash holder slash brush. So this has got a little brush on the end here for cleaning this mat off. Um, so it's just literally for brushing this mat clean. Um, the little comb thing here is for uh, combing the actual fiber, like so. Um, sort of combing those together. Um, it's also for just using as like a weight. So you can kind of, like, dig this in and, like, use it to hold things down. Oh, sorry. Um, you can sort of dig this into the mat and use it to hold things down while you're, like, stabbing here so that you keep your fingers out of the way. So you can do this over and over again and use this thing to hold it still rather than getting your fingers in here and stabbing them. Um... I've poked myself a couple of times. These needles are super sharp, and they're barbed, so it does not help at all. Um, but I can lower this. You can see all five needles kind of poking in there. Um, so there's the five-needle punch. Um, this one has a lock, so you can't accidentally do it. Um, and it has... This little cover thing, which is a safety, but is also really annoying after a while. Um, so, like, if you're doing this every single time, it's like you've got that uh, spring noise, and, like, it's clicking every single time. Um, it got old pretty quick as far as that noise went, but 
I just turned, I basically put my headphones on and didn't listen to it. And that solved the problem. Um, this is the three needle, and it can be taken down to one or two needles. Um, so it's got a couple of different features here. It's got the this pink cap, which prevents you from pushing the needle into the bottom of this board. Um, so if you run it down into the cap, um, you don't, like, bend and break these needles. Um, if you need it to go super deep for some reason... Um, like if I needed to stab to the center of this car or something, uh, you can remove the pink cap and it works just fine, um, for really long, uh, punches. With, obviously, the caveat that if you punch it really long and it's not thick enough, you're going to stab your hand, which is where the foam mats come in place, uh, or come in play. You don't, they're there to prevent you from sticking yourself. Um, the other thing is this cap goes on here and then you use it to open this up and you can remove one or two of the needles out of this housing um, so that you can just make it a one needle holder or a two needle holder um, depending on what type of work you're doing. So if you just want one needle for doing super tiny work, you can do that. If you want three needles for doing a little bit quicker work, you can do that. So. Um, and then it also comes with this, like, little cone shape to, uh, prov they make other, like, accessories for doing apple case type stuff, and this just prevents you from hitting the edges of the applique thing. Um, it basically looks like a cookie cutter. Um, this just sort of guides you from ramming it into the sides of the cookie cutter. Uh, so that's the pen. The pen that I got from Hobby Lobby looked exactly like this. I think it was blue. Um, but the needles just sort of, I don't know if they weren't sharp enough to like go into the wool altogether or if they were too flexible. But when you stabbed like this, it just stopped. And you, you couldn't push it in. They just didn't go in. Um, so it was pretty annoying, and I'm going to return it. It's, I think, still in my purse to go back to Hobby Lobby. Um, all right, so that's all of the Clover stuff, all of the stuff from Fiber Trends, and the wool that I bought from my local yarn store. Um, the last thing that I want to show you was just something cute that I picked up on Amazon. And I don't really have a review of it yet, but it was a lot of things for the money. Um, so this is a little kit with different Shiba Inus um, dressed up. So this one's dressed up as a strawberry or dressed up in a strawberry hat with a strawberry purse. Um, they're all stapled together in here, so I might be able to flip through them quick. This one's just like a little laughing cute hyena. Or uh, Shiba Inu. Um, this one's got a cat hat and ca uh, cat paw print like bag. And the last one. Um, did I miss one? Feels like there's two here. Yeah. This one is more, I think it looks more like a chipmunk. Um, but it's wearing also the strawberry outfit. So, um, this came with a whole bunch. So each one of those patterns comes with a kit to do the whole thing, and they're all labeled. So this says B3, and then you go and you find B3, and this is all the wool to do that project. Um, so that's kind of handy. You get the pattern. Um, it also has a QR code to a YouTube video to show you actually how to do it, which I thought was very nice of them to include. Um... And then it's got some leather finger protectors that I suspect are not super useful. Based on how sharp these needles are, um, it might slightly help, but I bet you're still going to stab through this and it's still going to hurt. Um, interestingly, I've stuck myself quite a lot, but I have not like actually drawn blood, so that's something. Um, it still does hurt, though. 
Um, it also came with a pair of tweezers. I suspect to do this roughly the same thing as the uh, this little comb guy, basically to hold the things in place while you stab them so that you don't stab yourself. Um, the downside to the little needles, or the downside to the, the tweezers over the little needle guys um, on this rake, I guess, is that you can stab these at the ends pretty forgivingly. Um, they just kind of bounce out of the way. Uh, if you hit this dead on with one of the needles, it's going probably to break your needle. Uh, it, I don't think these tweezers are going to flex out of the way. They're going to win the battle. So um, you just have to be probably slower and more deliberate using the tweezers than you have to be here. Um, this you can probably stab pretty... Um, aggressively and as long as you don't like hit all the way back here with the plastic i don't think you'll cause any damage um it also came with a six pack of needles and this little needle holder uh i thought this needle holder was interesting in the way it works i've seen a bunch of these now um just kind of researching around but you basically take this thing you pull the cork out you just drop this needle in, and it's kind of all crooked and weird, and then you just stick this cork back in, and that's it. Like, you just hold it and punch just like that, and it's it's in there pretty tight, and I think it's just fine, but it looks uh, kind of sketchy. <laughs> um, it's just sort of this little, like, makeshift holder, but... I've seen tons of people using them, and that seems to be the accepted way of just holding these single needles. You can also just hold these and punch with them. Um, that works just fine. Um, I see Val say, never realized there were so many accessories. Maybe you could do a felting project one day. Um, yeah, that actually sounds like fun. I might do one of these little Shiba Inu guys. Uh, I probably won't get very far unless I start um, by doing the head first, because it actually takes a while to get the first ball and, like, the big chunk, like, felted all together into something reasonably dense. Um, you can't really tell it, but this thing actually weighs quite a bit and, like, is pretty dense, and it has no, doesn't really have stuffing or anything. It's just all felted into sort of a brick. Um... It gets surprisingly tough just by locking the wool fibers together. Um, but obviously you do not need to buy all of these things in order to get started. Um, even just this little kit that I bought from Amazon has everything you need to start. So it actually came with this foam pad. So you would get a foam pad, you'd get six needles, you'd get a needle holder, you'd get tweezers... Um, this is a little bag of findings, um, different, like, pieces, parts to make these guys into keychains. Um, so there's, there's some sort of, like, long eyelets and little clips, and I think these are phone, um, or, like, camera style, like, little hangy things. Um, they're, th they're this kind that are super thin cord. That are meant to like loop through the tiny holes on like a camera um, or an old phone. They they don't have actually the little spots for those anymore. I don't think um, some phone cases I think still have them, but um, and then they just have like a little lobster claw on the top that clips into this spike, which I assume you're supposed to ram through the head of the little Shiba Inu. Um, and it's already bent, so I don't have a lot of hope for it going in very deep. But um, basically to turn them into keychains. So anyway, there's a bunch of keychain accessories in the little baggie here. Um, but you'd get all the felt, you'd get the needles, you'd get the foam. Everything else I bought was partly just to like try out and partly to show you guys. Um, and mostly because I know Clover makes a really good product pretty much no matter what. Um, that I, I thought I would, if I was going to, if I was going to do needle felting, 
I was going to do it with Clover products because I like Clover products. Um, and I knew that they would have the best. Um, I waited much too long to buy good Clover hooks from the point at which I started crocheting. So I used just regular metal boy hooks for probably a year and a half before I switched to Clover Amores. And um, definitely that was way too long. So, but yeah, it's it's kind of a fun, mindless task um, for a long portion of it. And then it gets like r really down in like the nitty gritty detail. And you can kind of decide how much detail you want to do. So, uh, you know, you, you can go kind of nuts with it or you can kind of go a little bit more broad. And I, I don't know, I thought it was a lot of fun to just sit and stab this little thing over and over and over again, and it just kind of turned into a thing. Um, so I definitely will be doing more. Um, I have a lot of crochet projects that are kind of on waiting out in the wings, but I had a lot of fun with the needle felting, so I might do another one of those before I pick back up my crochet. Um, but yeah. So, um, I'm certainly no expert in needle felting, but it was fun, and I think I will keep up with it for at least a little while and play around with some more of this felt that I already have here, and I don't know, see what happens. Um, I did save all of my little bits and pieces of wool that, like, were too small, but I had already broken off of the chunk. Um, I think I can just stuff... Well, I can I can do one of two things. I can sort of just turn this into core wool where I just make a ball and then cover it up with something else. Um, or I can use it for stuffing for amigurumi that uh, doesn't really matter what color they get stuffed with. So um, anyway, I just held on to the little bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, so... That's sort of my adventure into needle felting and the, wherever that went, what was it called? Mini Kingdom book. Um, I don't know that I have a whole lot else to talk about tonight. It was a lot on needle felting. I didn't actually think I'd talk that long about it. Um, but it turns out I bought a lot of stuff for it. So, uh, yeah. If you guys have questions on crochet or the needle felting or yarn in general, I don't know a whole lot yet about wool in general, but um, at least like what wools are good. I think this is a um, a merino, but sort of a heavy weight merino. And then I don't know what the nice colored ones are, um, but. Um, okay. Uh, Yarn It Out is saying, hello all. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, we've been talking about, uh, needle felting and then a little bit about a crochet book. And that's about it. Um... Oh, you know what? I do have one project I can share an update on. Um, I started working on... Oh, uh... Catcraft is asking what brand are the felting kits. Honestly, I don't know if they have a brand. Um, I can see if they... If there's any detail on here. Um, they are very much of the generic, uh... Probably like either from China or like just kind of a generic brand. But if you search uh, needle felting and Shiba Inu, uh, that's definitely what you, I mean, you'll find just tons and tons of them. Um, I really had to prevent myself from buying more before I actually got these, did them um, because there are some super adorable ones. Um, that's one of them, but not the one I bought. 
Uh, my husband's showing them up on, on my screen, but not on yours. So this one has the strawberry Shiba Inu. Um, and then the one that's like laughing. And the one that looks like a cat. It was roughly $20. 22 maybe. Something like that. Um, the other needle felting stuff that I got came from Fiber Trends, and I bought that at my local yarn store. Um, and that's where I got the 8-pack of wool, and then I also got the 4-pack of really nice needles with this foam block. Um, he's showing me more needle felting stuff. There's kind of a crazy, like, realistic-looking Shiba Inu. Um, but the other thing that I started working on recently, and I've got mixed feelings about the whole project at this point, um, is a mint green elephant. Um, just a little amigurumi. It was a request from a friend. Um, and I got the yarn because... It was actually surprisingly difficult to find really good mint green, uh, like a really good mint green color. And so I was at Hobby Lobby and I found this yarn and it is a 50% modal, 50% uh, cellulose acetate uh, blend. And those are both these regenerative celluloses where they completely dissolve uh, different types of usually wood pulp, but sometimes like bamboo, which is sort of still wood pulp. Um, but they, they basically dissolve them completely down and extrude them like they are uh, plastics. And what results is a natural product that goes through a man-made process. Um, and it usually results in a super, super crazy soft yarn um, or well, yarn and then super crazy soft fabric, uh, but also usually has kind of some of these flyaway problems. Um, so the tensile and modal and uh, rayon and viscose yarns all seem to have the same, like I'm, I can just pull, there's nothing really holding this yarn together. I can just pull chunks of it out. I don't know if you can see this, but like, like, if I clear my fingers here, and then, so I'm just running my fingers down this yarn, I can just pull, like, a heap of yarn out. And, like, you can see, that's how much comes off, just, like, running my fingers down there. So, I knew it might not be a great idea for Amigurumi, because it was going to get uh pretty, like, readily beat up. And the stuff as you work with it kind of like fluffs all over the place and usually ends up like up my nose and makes me sneeze. Um, but the color is really cute. It's also turning out quite a bit smaller than I thought it was going to. Um, and that's just mostly that I wasn't really paying attention. But I've got, I mean, I did the pattern correctly, but it's just... It's just smaller than I thought it was going to be. So I've got the trunk made. Um, it's not really standing up because it needs to be filled. But you can see the trunk made. And I've got the ears made. Um, and I've got the head and the body. And I am three limbs short. So I've got one. I think this is an arm. Uh, for right here. So I need two legs and another arm, and that's it. Well, I think there's a tail, but I think it's just made of, like, a braid. I just, I'm not sure about it. I'm nowhere near as, like, crazy happy with it as I was the teddy bear that I made. And so, I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. I'm definitely going to finish it. Uh, but I've got some mixed feelings about it right now. So uh, the yarn is, like I said, ultra, ultra soft. But I am pretty worried about how bad it's shedding. Um, like I said, you can just pick giant fluffs off. And so I, 
I don't know how well it's going to hold up, but it is for an adult, so it's probably not too big of a worry. Um, if it was for a small child, I'd worry that it would just get, like, it would look ratty in, like, a week. So, um, I'm not totally convinced it's not going to look ratty in a week anyway, but it's already this far, so I'm going to finish it. I don't know that I would do it again out of this yarn. I probably would find something else in mint green. But, like I said, it was surprisingly difficult to find a good mint green. Um, I don't know what that is. Maybe another foot? I think that's the foot that I'm working on. Um, once I get into Amigurumi, like, all the pieces with their tails for sewing them on get tangled so fast. So, I spend a lot of time re-untangling them. I usually just leave them in a pile on like the desk so that they don't get all tangled up in the bag but uh i wanted to bring these down and show them so they're all tangled together um and this is my little 3d printed yarn bowl that i've been working out of that is uh a surprisingly nice size uh, i was afraid it was going to be too little when we made it but it's it actually works out really nicely um for the sort of these medium size skeins um I also was a bit afraid that it was going to be too sharp on the edges. Um, it's not really sharp, but like pointy here. And that hasn't caused me any problems at all. So it's actually really nice. Uh, turned out really nice. My husband printed it for me. So anyway, uh, so that is actually all I have to share. So my project updates and then the needle felting stuff and the little amigurumi book. So... Um, and for those of you who missed the very beginning, I apologize once again for being kind of semi-sporadic about my, uh, streams. It's just been a particularly crazy time at work, and so I sometimes just end up working, and sometimes I just end up with a brain that's mush by the end of the night, and just don't have enough brain power to form sentences and, like, be personable and whatnot. So uh, thank you for sticking with me and joining me when I do stream. So, um, and for those of you who just found me, I do aim to stream on Thursday nights at eight o'clock. Uh, that's eight o'clock central time, but uh, sometimes they get canceled. If they get canceled, I try and post on Facebook and on Instagram um, at Experiments and Crafting, I usually also try to post on the community tab of uh, YouTube. Um, and sometimes I come home and fall asleep at 6 o'clock and post nowhere. So uh, I, I think I've only done that once in any recent history. But um, yeah, so thanks for sticking it out with me. And hopefully you got to see something cool tonight. And... Um, you'll end up down the rabbit hole of needle felting with me. Um, otherwise, I'm sure that I will uh, switch back to crochet after just a little bit. So crochet has been one of those things. I've tried pretty much every uh, hobby, I guess, or at least it feels like I've tried every hobby. Um, and some of them I like more than others, but I always come back to crochet. So it, it's the one that sort of stuck. So I've, I've done some sewing. I've done some other like needle craft type things. Um, I've done some scrapbooking. Uh, I've got a loom and I've done a little bit of weaving. I need to get the project that's on my loom off my loom. Um, but crochet is the thing that I always come back to. So uh, that is the primary topic of on this channel it's not always about needle felting but uh tonight was sort of a special case where i got to talk about something new so uh with all that being said i think i'm gonna wrap up for the evening and um we will again try and stream next week uh it would be thursday night at 8 p.m central time um, and again, if I can't make it, it'll be on Facebook or Instagram at Experiments and Crafting. 
or on the community tab on this channel. Uh, for I guess uh, have a great rest of your week and have a good weekend. And for those of you in like most of the middle north part of the country, try and stay warm. It's supposed to be another uh, brutal weekend, I think. I think the lows are in the negative double digits around here this weekend. So uh, stay warm and have a great rest of your week and hope to see you next week. Good night. Bye.